Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Okay, my IQ may be somewhat equal to the optimal storage temperature of wine, but I'm definitely picking up on some kind of theme here. We started with the serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, great for depression and anxiety states. Then we continued on to the tricyclic antidepressants, which also exert both serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition, though our main focus there was treating neuropathic pain. And now we're continuing the chapter with monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAO inhibitors. Monoamines, of course, include norepinephrine and serotonin, so again, we're going to be increasing the noradrenergic and serotonergic transmission both in the periphery and in the CNS. This time, though, we'll also be enhancing the activity of another monoamine, dopamine, and that means we'll be treating Parkinson's. But that's about it, really, because MAO inhibitors just really aren't used anymore in clinical practice. One of the first classes of antidepressants introduced in the 1950s, MAO inhibitors were historically used for depression and anxiety, but fell out of use due to toxicity and lethal food and drug interactions. They're now primarily used to treat depression unresponsive to other medications. Think of it this way, MAO inhibitors are kind of like Nicolas Cage. Born in the middle of the last century, useful for a while, even winning an Academy Award, mind you, but then slowly falling out of favor and now only used as a last resort by casting directors when other actors are unresponsive. MAO inhibitors act by blocking the activity of monoamine oxidase, thus preventing the breakdown of monoamine neurotransmitters and increasing their availability. There are two isoforms of monoamine oxidase, MAOA and MAOB. In this sketch, MAO will be represented by a mouse MAOA, then, is an albino mouse. MAOA preferentially deaminates serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is the cutest MAO I've ever seen. Hey there, my eyes may be sickly and red, but that doesn't mean they can't move you to tears. Anyway, as he takes tiny nibbles from that cheese wheel, let it remind you that MAOA is responsible for catalyzing the oxidative deamination of amines such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, thereby decreasing monoamine content in peripheral and CNS neurons. Let me show you what I mean. This little albino MAO here has decided to enjoy the assertive, earthy, and complex flavor of a beautifully aged Gruyere. That smiley face, of course, is our recurring sketchy symbol for serotonin. His friend has decided to partake of the rich, buttery interior and white, bloomy rind of an exquisite camembert. In this sketch, though, let that north compass remind you of norepinephrine. And in the back, our last albino MAO is a bit shy, but that doesn't mean he's not enjoying the delicate texture and chewy tannins of that dopamine rope. So, while MAOA breaks down serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, MAOB just kind of focuses on metabolizing that dopamine. And instead of an albino mouse, MAOB will be represented by a black mouse. Maybe you can spot that cute little black MAO now, lurking high in the shadows, <laughs> helping out with the metabolism of that dopamine rope. God, he's just so cute. <laughs> 